everyone to not the tippy top of Mount Manitoba, but we're in near the peak of Mount Manitoba. And it's me, it's Kirk Buckner. It's Evan Nolan, this guy over here. And we run not in Hall of Fame.com, the fictitious athlete Hall of Fame, the fictitious rock and roll Hall of Fame, and the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. And we want you to vote right now. Now, actually, not now, after the show. Do it then. After the show. Yeah, finish this first. Yeah, finish this first. We've got lots of great things to say. And you're going to go to www.notinhalloffame.com forward slash USA. And you're going to vote for the first ever United States Athletic Hall of Fame. And the great thing about this, it's democracy. It is pure democracy in action. And you are all going to be a part of it. And, you know, later on, Evan, I'm going to be talking about the culture war. And, you know, uh, actually, I'm going to be doing that a little bit early. And you know how I like a good beer. But you do as like a good beer. Yeah, so... Sometimes I like a bad beer. <laughs> That's actually more likely. That is more likely, yes. And, you know, I like drinking, as you know. I've done this a few times here. I love the taste of beer, even bad beer. But what does it say if, you know, here, here, I got my, my beer here, but it's, uh, it's, it's not Bud. It's not Bud Light. It's Bud Zero. What does it say about the culture war? No, what does it say what about... I mean, what am I in the culture war if I'm drinking a Bud Zero? Other than the fact refer, I want to get drunk. refer to the second word of your drink. All right. There's <laughs> that. There's that. So I was just sort of thinking that. Look, I just don't want to get drunk in this mor in the morning. It, it, it gonna... means it, it means that your taste buds have surrendered, and they just say, "Fuck it, we'll take whatever." <laughs> two, two two things with that. It's not that I want to get drunk this morning. I don't want to get drunk this morning. I don't want to get drunk this afternoon. And Fair. speaking of surrender, Cheap Trick is playing Winnipeg. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So I told Pauline, my wife, that we're going to go to that. And she looks at me like, what's cheap trick? And I say like, oh, dear Lord. And then I sing Surrender. And she looks at me like. And then I go with Dream Police. Nothing. I, 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 I was like, uh, I was like Damone and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> if, if I didn't date myself enough. Yeah. But there is one scene there. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to make you very excited uh my town the next town over i told you is the spinners i'm going to be bartending for the all-american rejects coming up over there nice. my town my town announced our big big uh performer for the year <clears throat> our headliner this year is the bodines yeah you were t you, i think i think you mentioned that no i found out yesterday we didn't oh okay yeah so we got we got closer to free and that other song and i don't know what they're going to do for the rest of the hour and a half so we'll find out there you go. Well, it's been a it's been about ten days since we we've done this. Yes. Uh, there's not much has happened in the last ten days, though. We're fine. Yeah. Well, there you like go. We've crowned two champions, and Miami's gone and cried in there. I guess not. Bud zeros. There. I'm. I got micheladas. <laughs> I told my wife that I didn't want to drink as much beer, so she bought me zero beer. There you go. And in, in the immortal words of Frank Turner, I'm not drinking anymore. Then again, I'm not drinking any less. There you have it. So yeah. feel free to make fun of me, guys. I It's not like I don't have a partner here who does it for me. Uh, so you might as well just pile on. Uh, but yes, we are going to congratulate first off the Denver Nuggets, who, and that's going to be a big part of the elevator up. And also yeah. in the world of hockey, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, congratulations two, to both teams. Two first-time champions. Hard to do. Yeah, two first-time champions defeating two eight seeds from Miami. I think it's safe to both, say this will never happen again. Both of whom got through a high, more, more highly rated Boston team on the way to get there. Oh, that's right. Yes. And the and the Golden Knights won. The, so the Stanley Cup final was, by the way, congratulations on your beer back uh, for that. <laughs> no, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, okay, so now I'm down, now I'm down three or four? Three. You're down okay, so three. down three. Now – if I sort of like work my way back up for the World Cup 2026? Six. Oh, we got to that too today. Yeah, for 2026, because that's when that might be the first time we actually meet. Because uh, again, we do this every every week, but we've never actually met. Go figure that one out. Uh, wait till he finds out that I'm really a midget. But wait till he finds out I'm really a figment of his imagination. <laughs> Holy Tyler Durden moment right there. My <laughs> God. Uh, who the hell knew that? Ah. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so we're going to talk a lot about those well, two. Well, go ahead. Well, let me just finish. I was going to say the Stanley Cup Finals battle between the eight seed that beat us in seven games and the coach we fired because he couldn't get us to the Stanley Cup Finals. 
mm -hmm. uh, then of course won the Stanley Cup Finals. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember what I was going to say. Like, if I finally get over the over the plus, just because I'm drinking mm -hmm. Bud Zero now, does it mean that's what I'm going to ask ask in, in payment? No, and God, no, 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 no. You you said beer, and in the words of in the words of uh, Bart Simpson when he was talking to a poo. But Apu, what happens if someone wants a non-alcoholic beer? And Apu said, strangely, that problem has never come up. <laughs> it's a secret peace garden on the roof of the Quickie Mart where uh, where Paul and Linda McCartney live. Ah, but you see, Apu no longer exists, but near beer still does. So there we go. There you go. Speaking of so, the culture war. No, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm back to that. We are. We are a little bit because I want to sort of like uh, take a dump on somebody named Anthony Bass. And I say it like this. Somebody named Anthony Bass, because we're going back to the smorgasbord of shit. What this is, is when Kirk decides, you know what, I'm just going to get something off my chest. Sometimes it's good, usually it's bad, usually it's me venting. And when I told Evan right before that, that I'm going to be doing this, his first words to me was, who's that? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you who he is, and some of you may not know who, who he is. It's, it's a bigger deal up in Canada, because he is or was a Blue Jay. Now, Anthony Bass is... I'm going to tell you the good parts about this guy. All right. He has played 10 years in Major League Baseball, all pretty much in middle relief. Which means that when he's eligible for the for the Baseball Hall of Fame, he's going to he's he's actually eligible. He will sorry, he qualifies. He's not going to get mm -hmm. on the ballot, but there's always 10 or 12 players, give or take, who every year will not make a ballot because they know there's just no point. They're still mm -hmm. all good player, qual usually quality players, and it's still a goddamn achievement to to have been in the majors for ten years. Yeah, and I mean, just honestly, making the ballot is in itself a complete honor because the number of people who make a ballot total is, I mean, people in Hall of Fame is small, but people make a ballot is probably one out of ten at the maximum. Mm -hmm. It's probably like eight percent, somewhere around there. I haven't actually done the math, but that's my guess, somewhere around. Yeah, there. it's it's that's probably accurate. So Bass, about seven weeks ago, uh, did something really stupid. I was going to break out uh, the Jilly Award. Now, do you know what that is? No. Okay, so that's a, another thing that I came up with because, well, this is pretty much all I do. <laughs> <laughs> is I make up shit, and then I tell Evan we're doing this. Yeah, pretty much. And, yeah. and to be fair, though, we did plan the show. We had 30 seconds before we started, so... Uh, you, that beats it usually by 20 in a couple messages. So that, there you go. That is true. That yeah. is true. Well, the Jilly is, uh, it's in honor of uh, your first lady. Who okay. you sports fans left and right when she said something so colossally stupid during the NCAA tournament when Iowa lost to LSU. And if I was 25 years younger, I think, uh, you think Bayou Barbie and I have a shot? No? Okay, no. I don't think so either. No. <laughs> that was damn emphatic. Yeah, no. Hi, my name Keep is Punchline, going. and uh, actually, that's my last name. The first one's Evan. Keep going. Keep going over there. Don't, don't get derailed. Oh, yeah, well, that's what it means. You're, you're going to get derailed soon enough. Let's just let's exactly. keep going on. Yes. All right. So, and it's and it's where where Jill Biden said, I think uh, both teams should go. I'm going to talk to Jill about it. And pretty much sports fans left and right at the dial said, the, you're an idiot. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing you could say. So seven weeks ago, I was going to give Anthony Bass the first Jilly because Anthony Bass, his uh, wife and two young children were going in a plane on United. Uh, children are five and three. Oh, yes. I didn't realize who that's who that was. Now okay. That. All right. So then you, you've seen this story. I, this, this I do remember. But he okay. wasn't as important enough for me to know who the heck he was. So continue. Right. So what he did is he shared a picture that I guess his, his wife took. His wife is six months pregnant. And it was just a big mess of popcorn and the two kids there. And mm -hmm. not, and it was a tweet to United. United, I, can you believe that you, like, it's disgusting. I, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember what it was exactly. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, but it wasn't as well as eloquent as the Iron Sheik. But he asked for the United to, like, this was disgusting. What are you going to do about this? I mean, my pregnant wife had a cleanup after my kid's mess. And he yeah. doubled down on it a little bit later. So and when people said, what do you think she'd clean up? The crew! And so he came off like an entitled douchebag. And I mean, the crew is, crew is busy doing things like flying the plane and taking care of all the other people. Well, so he was maybe part of the cleanup plane. crew, to be fair. But still, I mean, like. And yeah, it, and the cleanup still, crew doesn't come on during during the thing. Well, they walk up and down the aisles and ask for stuff. But they're not going to come by with a 
dustpan and broom to sweep up your popcorn. I mean, I, I know this. I mean, I don't have kids. You do. Uh, I have dogs, though. And when they do, they have an accident somewhere, I pick it up because mm, they're not yeah. capable of it. Or in your case, you probably have your kids pick it up. Or if they're when they were too younger, you you do it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I pick up all the dog poop. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So I, and most so. people sort of gr could agree with that. And then I'm looking at who's commenting and holy shit, Candace Owens. Far, a far right individual, a uh, lovely black woman, far left, far lovely black woman, Akilah Hughes, both said, what a piece of shit. They didn't say it like that, but they more or less said, what a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. That's a Jilly. Now, I, for whatever reason, we must have had a lot of real Hall of Fame stuff to talk about, so I didn't mention it. And you remember right. last week when I said, you know what, uh, I was going to say something, but then I changed my mind. Yeah. It was about Anthony Bass, because I was going to, and I'm glad I did, because the day he got let he pretty much got a uh, dfa so designated for assignment mm -hmm. so here's what he did here for those maybe not aware because it's a much bigger deal in canada so he shared a post on either instagram twitter i don't, I don't know what the post was but it, i looked for it but it's it's deleted but it was a video sort of saying hey you should be supporting the uh the ban on target and bud and bud light yeah yeah this is why i'm sort of taking a self-joke drinking bud zero this doesn't mean I'm necessarily endorsing one side of the culture war. I'm just an observer because I, I kind of realize whatever happens in the culture war isn't going to change much in my life. So I'm just going to sit back and watch. Uh, you know that I dislike it, extremists of any kind, and that hasn't changed. So, yeah. I mean, you do you. You want to tell people to, to, to do this? Fine. But have you not been watching the last seven, eight years? If you're going to dip your foot in the culture war, you are going to piss off people, regardless of which side you're taking. You just had, a, you were just six weeks removed from doing something colossally stupid. Now, you ever see a South Park episode where, uh, you don't watch South Park, though, do you? I, I used to. It depends on how, okay. how old the episode now, is. This, okay, this one's relatively new, uh, or a few years it's ago. So Cartman, Cartman's trying to... Uh, he, he posts a picture of himself and he thinks how buff he looks. And then he, mm -hmm. he's getting ripped apart because he should, because he doesn't. And mm -hmm. he cries over to the PC principal. And then somehow through a turn of events, Butters becomes tasked with just go, filtering his, um, his uh, comments. And he only gets read the good ones. I'm wondering right. if Butters works for Anthony Bass. Because somehow he just did not learn that maybe this is something that you shouldn't do. Now... A little bit more about Anthony Bass. I praise his skill, but he's also 35. So like a lot of 35-year-old athletes, he's not as good as he used to be. He also right. was never great. I mean, obviously, he was good enough to be a Major League Baseball player for 10 years and good on him for that. But at best, he was probably never better than the 17th best player on his team. Fair. No. Yeah. Sure. Or, or, le or at least more accurately, I could say probably never better than the number eight pitcher. Okay, fair. Yeah. No one has ever said, well, look, we got to go out to the game tonight because Bass <laughs> might pitch uh, two thirds of an inning and only let in one walk. That's never happened. Mm -hmm. Anthony Bass can walk to a lot of places and people might think, oh, I think he's an athlete. Oh, he's a Blue Jay or whatever team he used to play for. But mm -hmm. using Jay's terms, Val Vladimir Guerrero will part the Red Sea in Toronto. Anthony Bass doesn't. Meaning, know who the fuck you are. You are somebody who managed to make 20 or probably over $20 million being eh, on a pro level. Nobody wants to know what you think. Now, when he threw, when he, when he did the, the popcorn thing, oh, well, one of my favorite thing with, with the popcorn bit was people commenting, the, your kids are just like you. They're throwing garbage because his ERA was over seven at the time. Right. Now he brought it down to like four and a half when all this happened. But, okay, so he does this. He apologizes within 12 hours and probably the most half-hearted apology that I've ever seen. He might as well have had a hostage gun to his head. Now, I'm not saying that I can arbiter anyone's sincerity, but I think he wasn't sincere. He didn't mean it. Nobody bought it anyway. And bottom line mm -hmm. is, when you when you screw up like this, the mob, left or right, they're, they're, they don't care. It's, not, it's never good enough. Would have been better off saying nothing, but he was probably forced to, whatever. Now... The Jays just had their Pride weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, before we get to the Jays' Pride weekend, Bass did pitch. Uh, and he was booed by the entire stadium. 
So Toronto media or Canadian media says, look, they're all mad at him for the LGBT shit. Part of them were. The other part mm-hmm. were probably the Toronto conservative saying like, yeah, yeah, caved, yeah, you suck, yeah, 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 little bitch. And then there were people like me, like, I mean, people pick up popcorn. What's the matter with you? I wasn't there, yeah. but I mean, that's why I would have been booing him. Yeah, personally. understood. I mean, it's just like have some basic decency of work living in a society. Yeah, so like he make was, a mess playing out. So he won now the second Jilly. Now, difference is everyone hates him. It's just for different reasons. Hmm. But you know, you gotta drag, diversify the hate. Right. The drag queens and the Hitler youth can all agree that we don't like Anthony Bass. Man, that was really polarizing, wasn't it? But they're not all gems. Keep going. I know, keep going. Okay. So five hours before he's set to like uh, be to catch the ceremonial first pitch, he's designated for assignment. <laughs> yeah. And I can't help but laugh a little bit because this is all your goddamn fault. Mm-hmm. Because you have no self-awareness of who you are. Other people have spoke out against their beliefs and whatever your beliefs are, fine. Uh, I'm not telling you what you should believe, what you shouldn't believe. Again, personally, I could care less. If I was a major league player, they said, we're, the, we're a pride thing. Okay. We're the army fatigue. Okay. We're a Filipino heritage night. I'm I'm not just throwing that out of my ass. The Jets did have that here. Huge Filipino okay. population. So okay. It would take a lot for me to get to really get wild on a lot of things uh, did, for that sort of thing. Did, did, did they have pansit for, or pansit for the uh, Filipino heritage night? I don't that know that ridiculously good. Hands oh, I, I didn't go. I didn't go to that game. I'm just saying they, they if they didn't, they they missed an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Continue. Uh, I probably had it with the amount of Filipino friends that I've had over my life and not currently. But anyway, you probably uh, had so, it, not realized when it was. But continue. Yeah. So long story short, this guy probably when he was told when okay because he said in his little hostage speech, which is what I'm going to call it, you know, the Jays are going to be providing me with some resources, and I'm going to get better. Then they probably, mm-hmm. what I'm guessing happened is they provided him with those resources. It's like, what, what, no, I, I thought this was just a line. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. When you're the 17th best player on your team, maybe shut the fuck up because you, the, all the other players from 1 to 26 don't really, including the managers and staff, really don't want to deal with this distraction. Mm-hmm. This is more of a whole self-awareness thing. And let's just, this. it, it, it should be a learning lesson to people, but it won't be. I don't know how anyone his age, because this is he's the perfect age for him to completely understand all the social media. He's not young to, to have made a mistake. He's not old to have made a mistake. Like, what is this shit? You know, mm-hmm. uh, that the first person who really got canceled in social media, Justine Sacco, that PR person. When what? That was like seven, eight years ago. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I'm not even sure who yeah. that person but it, is. But it's happening. Yeah, all there have been so many people canceled, it's hard for me to keep track of who people right, are. Know right, right. And that's that's really what I, what I want to just do. I just want to award Anthony Bass two Jillies and for just the most unavoidable shit. This, there is no reason for you to even come off, come off like that. Uh, I hope you saved your money because your baseball is not going to be worth much. It's not like mm-hmm. you're going to get a consulting job from anybody. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if you're a transphobe. I know I know a lot of people say, well, of course he's, he shared that video. Well, some of the people are just saying, well, we're protecting the kids. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to get into his mind. I'm just telling you he's colossally self, he's just not aware of who, of where his place is in society. That's what I'm going to mm-hmm. say. Fucking moron. That's it. Fair enough. Okay. We, should we get like an actual award, like an actual jilly? Uh, that's all on you. I'm not. I'm not taking any part of the jelly. You don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't. You might. You might award a jelly one day. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. I. Only, as we know from my end segment, I only talk about the positive. I'm like Mark McGuire. I'm only here to talk about the positive. I'm not here to talk about the past. No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, when you close with a with a show, with a portion called "Good, the Bad, and the Ugly," and that's usually yeah. your most animated. Yeah. That's that's. that's Wait, wait, wait till we get there today. Well, yeah. that was that was my poo-poo platter. I just wanted to sort of get no. that off of my uh, off my chest. Just watching this happen in real time. What a moron! That's yep. 
Okay, uh, we lost a few people, I, I think, because there really isn't any Hall of Fame related news. Uh, there is, there was the announcement, or what happened last week. Uh, just a, a quick thing. Uh, actually, can I vent on one more, one, uh, one other thing? You're the boss. You're the commissioner. Oh, uh, uh, chairman. Hey, Jill, Jill's husband. Now, see, I'm invested in the WNBA. Okay. But you know where I'm going. Right, good deal. Good deal. Good deal. If you're gonna, if you're gonna congratulate the Vegas Golden Knights. And just say congratulations to the great American city of Las Vegas for having their first major championship. This only happened a few months after the Las Vegas Aces won. And I know there's a lot of people listening who are saying, okay, that's not a real league, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, Biden must think so, and the people who think like him should. And it's not like he hasn't been sort of emotionally invested in a certain WNBA player over the last little while. True. So it's I, like I will... Be, um... I will bet your train ticket from Washington, D.C. to Wilmington, Delaware, that he has never seen a WNBA game in his life. I and will also never, bet he's and, never seen his Twitter in his life either. Uh, no, that's also probably true. Yes. So. But having said that, whoever's handling that for him, like, <laughs> you can't pretend to care and then make this big mistake like this. It's so sad. And you know what? I'm going to render about something else. Did okay. You, did you see what happened to Brittany Griner recently? Uh, what specifically? Uh, when a, a right-wing proc provocateur named Alex Stein approached her in an airport. No. Okay, so what, what he did is like, Brittany, Brittany, do you still hate America? Brittany, Brittany, do you still hate America? Brittany, Brittany, what do you think about being traded for the merchant of death? That's a, that'd be an actual interesting question to hear. Having said that, okay, so I, I don't know if I've accurately sort of shit on everybody on the on the other side of the political aisle, but this one's to the conservatives. And again, if I'm pissing people off, so be it. When Brit when Brittany left, all of all of you, my myself included, because I said that I think on this show. If she comes back, I think she's going to have a completely, hopefully she'll have a completely better appreciation for the country that she left because mm -hmm. she had it pretty damn good. Yeah, she wanted things better. A lot of, we all do. And what she, what, so what has she been doing? She actually said, it means a lot more to me hearing the anthem and I'm, and they're all standing. You got what you wanted her to do. Shut up. Yeah, this is your win. That, that's it. I just hate pettiness. Oh, welcome to the political universe. Well, that's or just people in general. I know. Yeah. I, sorry, I took you on a roller coaster. You, you didn't see it coming. I guess I had a lot more on my poo poo platter than I there thought. There's a lot there. I mean, you didn't do it last week. So, I mean, well, yeah, well, I, I, I didn't do it last week, but just these other things are pissing me off. And yes, I'm, I am. This is part of my pitch to become the WNBA commissioner. I have to protect these women. Fair, fair, fair enough. I, uh, I will. Ha I have a lot to say about another commissioner coming up, but uh, let's let's go through the folks who have passed away, if you don't mind. Yes, better um, no than my chances of being the WNBA commissioner. Mm, you never know. I'm I mean, pretty sure that's not happening. Well, here's here's a problem. If you actually care about the uh, players and the team in the. Uh, fans and you can't be a commissioner i've pretty much figured that out in sports um so uh, so we'll start with the beige mistress we lost a couple this week um a couple of hungarians of course Jano saray hungarian cyclist from 1960 Summer Olympics, died at the age of 88. Uh, but also, Ben Svoboda, motorcycle races, racer, died in a crash during a race this week. That sounds like the beige mistress to me. At the age of 31. Yeah, I'd say that's more, more likely. Oh, she's amping it up here, isn't she? She is indeed. Yeah. Um, this is a the world endgame. <laughs> um from the world of uh i'll start with hockey uh canadian national team player floyd martin past the age of 93 uh was a member of the bronze medal uh, team at the 56 olympics olympics and 
60 silver medal Olympics, uh, played for the Johnstown Jets of Pittsburgh Hornets in his uh, professional career, but he passed away at the age of 93. Here's a useless um, stat for you. You know that Great Britain's got a gold medal in, the, in hockey? In really? Yeah, really. From when? Um, like way in the early days. Mm. Okay. Um, we lost a couple of cyclists this week to, uh, to their events. I know we talked about the other uh, motorcycle racer who passed away, but Gino Mater from uh, Switzerland, uh, one of those crazy bikers, you know, the Tour de France or whatever. Well, during the Tour of Switzerland, uh, which is right near where he's from originally, he went off the course uh, along with an American, uh, both went off the course on a steep downhill. American had a concussion. He didn't make it. Uh, went off a cliff, essentially, uh, and died oh, at the age of 26. Yeah, they the people had warned about it ahead of time that this is a dangerous thing, and two the two of them were went right off next to each other. Uh, Mater did not survive. Uh, the American, whose name I don't have in front of me, did. So, uh, and then they continued the race the next day because that's how they work this, I guess. Uh, also passing away, Pat Casey, the BMX freestyle cycle uh, cyclist, won six X uh, medals of the X Games over the years. Uh, passed away actually practicing in San Diego. Um, I'm sorry, he's he's uh, he was doing motorcycle actually at this point. He did all the stuff in BMX, but he was jump doing a jump on a motorcycle, uh, fell off, and the motorcycle landed on him, uh, and he died at the age of 29. So. Bad, it was a bad week to be on a motorcycle, actually, because uh, mm -hmm. we also lost Treat Williams, the actor, uh, yeah. passed away in, in uh, Albany, New York, and a motorcycle crash as well. Uh, my wife, actually, when she brought that up, because she said all these people, apparently Treat Williams is one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. I was reading that, these, too. Yeah. Yeah, all these tributes to him. And she's like, I had no idea who he was. And then she was watching him in, uh, what movie was it originally? Oh, he's been in so many. I, 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 oh no, she, her mom was like, the kids, she and her sister can figure out what to watch. She's like, I want you to watch a musical. And they just pull out hair. <laughs> it's a tough one to watch when you're not prepared for it. And so that's the first time I ever saw it was in hair. And then the next movie they watched happened to be The Phantom, where he's the bad guy in The Phantom. So she's like, never forgot how to treat Williams was because she got the entire spectrum essentially of his career in two movies in about three days. Did he die in um, Phantom? I don't remember that. Does no, Phantom he didn't die. die? Cuz he dies yeah, there. He's the bad guy in Phantom. Yeah. Oh, does he die in the does he die yeah. probably? I I haven't seen the Phantom since 1996. I don't actually remember. I don't know how much I really remember of it. Um but anyway, yeah, he was 71. And while we're on the subject of famous people who passed away this week, uh Glenda Jackson, two-time winner oh. of the Academy Award for Best Actress. I missed that. Uh, had, Passed away at the age of 87. Uh, did not show up for either of her wins because she was too busy working on other things at the time. Um, she's won mm -hmm. two Academy Awards, three Emmys, and a Tony. So she was just a Grammy short of an EGOT. Any BAFTAs? Um, I could double check that. That's probably at the bottom. Sorry. Uh, that's right. Uh, awards and honors. Well, you're, while you're doing that, I mean, Glenda Jackson's not really one of those actresses. I mean, I know I've seen her in a pile of stuff. But I just remember as a little kid that was sort of like one of my first introductions to like watching the Oscars and and then Glenda Jackson and then it's like oh I think I, I had one of those like little kid moments like British people are smarter than the rest of us just from the yeah it's the, it's the accent they're also more more evil which is also the accent um, so she won Best Actress for Women in Love and a Touch of Class in seventy in seventy three she was nominated in seventy one for Sunday Bloody Sunday which she did not win. But she did win the BAFTA for Sunday Bloody Sunday in 71. Okay. So there you go. She did win a BAFTA. So, um, yeah, she was 87 years old. Uh, well, I'm still working with uh, famous folks. Um, Carol Higgins Clark, Mary Higgins Clark, the uh, mystery writer's daughter, who wrote a few things with her, uh, passed away at the age of 66 from appendix cancer, which just sounds like completely unnecessary and something we could have been and Dave will take care of. But yeah. other than writing, do you know what uh, Carol Higgins Clark's probably biggest play, uh, claim to fame is that her apartment, do you remember Corey Lytle crashing his plane into the building? I do. 
her apartment was the one directly under where he crashed. Oh. So she was not home at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just she was right there. But she passed away at the age of only 66. Her mom died a couple years ago at 92. Um, so um, also passed away, speaking of writers, uh, one of the most famous writers of all time, Cormac McCarthy, uh, passed away at the age of 89. Um, I Cormac McCarthy always just seemed like an Irish guy who died a long time ago, just based on his name. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, Blood Meridian, No Country for Old Men, The Road, The Border Trilogy, a whole bunch of stuff, just uh, very, very well known and loved uh, uh, writer. Uh, he was 89. Yeah, uh, and last one I want to talk, yeah. last one I talk about is John Romita Sr., passed away at the age of 93. Uh, known for his work uh, with The Amazing Spider-Man, but he created uh, Mary Jane Watson, The Punisher, Wolverine, and Luke Cage. Oh. So the creator of Mary Jane, The Punisher, he's given most credit. He's more Punisher and Luke Cage are more collaborative. Wolverine is pretty much given to John Romita Sr. Mm -hmm. as the guy who was the main principal guy behind that. Uh, but he was he's a member of the, one of the Will Eisner Hall of Fame in, award in 2002, Inkwell Awards Hall of Fame in 2020. Uh, yeah, passed away at the age of 93. That's it. Uh, what? That's all who died? Oh no no no! I have I have a few. We're there, we don't have a bunch. Of, we don't have a bunch of big names. We'll just go through the last ones here quickly. Oh, okay. uh, a local, a local kid here, um, Patrick uh, Jacencia, who competed for the U.S. as our main one of our main ski jumpers in the last Olympics. Uh, died in a motorcycle accident around here uh, at the age of 24. He's from McHenry. How do you become a ski jumper from Illinois? We have one hill with a ski jump on it, v Villa Wait, Olivia. And he he that's where he started. So he was originally from Poland, but he passed away uh, in a motorcycle accident at 24. Well, what one hill is really all you need. It's like that scene from, man, I'm really going way back in all my references. It's like that scene from Hoosiers, right? Like uh, Gene Hackman get, uh, gets them to measure the uh, thing from the, the top of the rim to the floor. And then all yeah. the, I think you'll find it's, uh, it's the worst Gene Hackman. I think you'll find that it's the same in, in our, in, at Hickory High. Yeah. Okay. So no more, stop me from ever doing another impression for the rest of this show. I, I thought you were going Jack Nicholson at the beginning there. I don't... Jack. Um, anyway, uh, also passed away American, uh, Swimmer, Olympic swimmer Virgil Lucan, competed in 64 Olympics in Tokyo, uh, passed away at the age of 80. Um, Harvey Glantz, who won the gold medal as a member of the 4x100 relay at the 76 Summer Olympics, also won gold medals at the 79-87 Pan American Games, the 87 World Championships. Uh, he passed away at the age of 66 in car of cardiac arrest. Um and Ben Helfgott, who I don't usually talk about British Olympians, uh, but he won the uh, bronze. Uh, he, he competed for England in the Olympics in weightlifting. But what's interesting about Ben Helfgott, he is one of two known survivors of the Holocaust oh. ever to participate in the Olympics. Wow. Um, so he was 93. Yeah, I don't thought many of those. Isn't. Yeah. Uh, Beverly Shade is a an NWA Women's Tag Team Championship holder uh, in from wrestling. Do you know her at all? No, I'm not familiar with that name. I know nothing. She competed from 58 to 89. She passed away complications of lung cancer at the age of 87. She married fellow wrestler Billy Blue River. Does that help? Nope. No. Okay. Wrestling is your thing, but I saw it, so I figured I'd ask. Um, from the world of music, uh, we lost uh, Christy Dign uh, Dignam, lead singer of the Irish rock band Aslan. Um, he passed away at the age of 63. Uh, what did he die of? I didn't see that. Uh, if the band's called Aslan, is it like from a thorn to the paw? <laughs> it was not. It was multiple myeloma. Which I will not mean? have a I will not have a joke that's based in the last thirty years, will I? Yeah, that's 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 about as far from multiple is from a thorn in the paws you can get. So, um, 
Uh, also passing away, Blackie Onassis, the drummer oh. from Urge o Overkill. Yeah, I love that band. Yeah, uh, he passed away at the age of 57. I didn't see from what. Oh, man. No, so. the, like in the early 90s, that was, that was one of those bands, because uh, that's when there was so much more exposure to anything more grunge or even rock oriented. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually loved their second album, which really tanked them, tanked them because nobody else bought it but me, apparently. But cool. Chicago based, I believe. Uh, that might be that I'm not sure. And I already closed the window. So we're moving because we're okay. Moving. Um, so uh, Homer Jones, uh, football wide receiver for the Giants and mm -hmm. Browns. Um, two time Pro Bowler, I believe. Yep, two time Pro yeah. Bowler. Second team all pro led the NFL in receiving touchdowns in 67. Uh holds, I believe, may still hold the record for career yards per reception at 22.3. I believe I've got him on my top 50 New York Giants list. I could be mistaken, but mm. I know I researched him for that at some Brand point. Target didn't, Brand Target didn't claim that he was faster than Bob Hayes. He's also credited for inventing the spike touchdown celebration. Whether true, that's true or not, Homer Jones is given the credit. Um, right. Second round, uh, sorry, 20th round pick out of Texas Southern. Uh, he passed away at the age of 82. Um, uh, also, Jim Turner, place kicker, a member of the uh, Chicago Jets, oh, sorry, Chicago, New York Jets uh, Super Bowl three team. Uh, played for the Jets 64 to 70, Broncos 71 to 79. Uh, Two-time Pro Bowler, AFL all-time second team, member of the Denver's uh, Denver Broncos Hall of Fame, uh, or I'm sorry, the Ring of Fame. Excuse me, they don't have a Hall of Ever Ring. Uh, passed away at the age of 82. And everyone else I got is baseball. Um, so Don Hood uh, pitched from 73 to 83 with the Orioles, Indians, Yankees, Cardinals, and Royals. Uh, passed away at the age of 73. Also, uh, Stan Saverin, uh, media personality based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates Media Walk of Fame, a member of the Western Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, he passed away at the age of 76. Um, he used to, at one point, he had the longest running sports show in the history of Pittsburgh television. And yeah. I guess the two big things we lost this week, both baseball, both Japan. Um, Manabu Hidebepu, who won the MVP in 1986 in the Central League, a member of the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, two-time Best Nine Award winner, uh, seven-time All-Star, Golden Glove Award winner, an ERA champion, uh, career 213 wins, 141 losses, all with a Hiroshima Carp. Uh, he passed away of uh, leukemia at the age of 65. Mm. And probably one of the biggest names in the history of Japanese baseball, uh, Shigeru Shugushita, uh, passed away at the age of 97, uh, played from 49 to 61, uh, won the Japanese Triple Crown, three-time Ijaiwa uh, Sajimura Warner, which is essentially uh, the Cy Young Award over there, three-time Cy Young Award winner. Uh, he was an MVP of the league as a pitcher was he world the japanese world series version uh, japanese series mvp uh and one of the highest uh and highest uh inductions in the hall of fame for the voting over there ever when he was inducted in 1985 uh he was 97 years old that's what i got okay uh it's a random thing i find it fascinating that uh it took uh mlb till i think 2019 to come up with their version of the best nine Mm. It'll be all all MB, uh, MLB. Well, according to Pete Rose, I mean the the baseball over there is you know minor league, so they don't you need to pay attention to it. To, Let me be fair, he said high triple you know, A, triple A, triple A, and uh, little A. I suppose. Well, I mean, but when he said it, that might not have been all that inaccurate. It's 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 the Japanese uh, baseball stars have gotten a lot better. Mm. But whatever. It's not like we can ever test that theory, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yep. So the next segment is, uh, sometimes I, I don't have much, but I got a lot here. Uh, 
as we knew we would. And you're going to be helping me out a lot with this one because it's the elevator. It's elevator up, elevator down. Who made their biggest Hall of Fame case for for their career? And with the conclusion of the Stanley Cup and the NBA championship, we got a lot. Elevator up, elevator down. We have a lot. So I got some names that I want to bounce off of here in hockey. Uh, okay. The first one for me, and I wonder what this really means. Uh, he is the current holder. He's the current Iron Man. Now, Iron Man hasn't proven to do a whole hell of a lot for Hockey Hall of Fame, but then we haven't had one who scored as much as this gentleman. That's Phil Kessel, who's now a three time champion. He's eight points away from a thousand. Didn't play that much, though. In no, he did, didn't play very much at all. And he says he's not, uh, people were just assuming he retired. I was going to assume he retired. He probably should. He probably uh, should retire. But, but I, I understand him wanting the eight points too. I do too. I I, I definitely do. I mean, ask a, ask, ask uh, friend McGriff if eight more home runs would have helped his Hall of Fame candidacy before he got in. This I, year. I'm, I'm going to continue my very old, archaic, even pre Kirk references. Ask early win because he stayed forever to get that 300th win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, makes sense. But uh, Kessel, I don't think he's not, there's not much left of him as a player, no. but he still can say, I'm a three-time champion. And he was happy to say it to Toronto media. It's like uh, they used to say I could never be a champion and now I'm a three-time one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Toronto, and I was living in Toronto that, or that area at the time. They were, they hated him. They mm -hmm. took such delight when, I think I've got this time frame right. Uh, so you know when they started drafting players, they went through that 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 phase when they were drafting players, like going back and forth, like what they do in the NBA now for the All Star Game. Mm -hmm. All right, so Kessel was picked last, and there was a lot of people in Toronto media going, <laughs> "It's just there's and something about him that rubbed people the wrong way in Toronto." I don't know what it is. I never quite got it, but I think they just built him up like he was going to be a lot better than he was than he was going to be during during Phil Kessel's lifetime. He's got more championships than the entire country. No, not quite. The entire country of Canada. It's getting close, though. Because because of that, Edmonton's won too many. I'd forgotten about that. But I mean, since, that, since that, Canada last, I'd rather you call me a zero last, again. Since Canada last won a championship in 1993. No, correct? no, 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 no. Raptors. Sorry, hockey. Okay. Okay, I thought you just right. meant in general, but yes. No, wait, no, no. Okay. No. Since since Canada won, last won the Stanley Cup mm. in 1993. Yeah, I know. Florida's yeah. won it three times. Texas has won it. Now Las Vegas has won it. Mm -hmm. Anaheim has won it. Los Angeles has won it. If I mean, want, if we want to go by state, is, are, yeah. is is any place in Canada able to make fun of anyone for anything? Honestly, when it comes to hockey, you're not being able to add that qualifier. But I mean, we also have our Olympic comp Olympic accomplishments. Cool, that's nice. <sighs> Toronto, nice. Toronto, Toronto's best players from from Arizona. Don't throw me to have to defend Toronto. You know how much I hate the Maple Leafs. I know you do. Yeah. I was to, to say I was to say I was essentially shit posting. Yeah, you're, you're getting on me because I did a 20 minute smorgasbord that you weren't expecting, and you got kids to play with. No, no that is that is actually more than anything. I have uh, I have a backyard to mow, and I have to do some cement work because we keep having skunks getting under my deck. So, mm -hmm. so well, okay, Kessel, it's it's an elevator up still because he still has the, he's still gonna have that third ring. Mm -hmm. And as time goes by, sort of his contribution to that sort of gets watered down a little bit. Uh, so it's definitely an elevator up. Uh, Jack Eichel is another elevator up. Uh, 100%. Yeah, could have been Nate, one of the well, five people, as as Gretzky said. Uh, also, too, I, I noticed too in the in the NH, and I didn't. On, it's on me. I didn't catch it either. That because uh, the commentators were saying, and we have our first major championship in Vegas. So they did it too, but to, to, but mm. I didn't catch it until Biden did that. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, Eichel's now a champion. Four hundred and forty-six points in four hundred and seventy-six games. It's only twenty-six. He's going to be able to rack up points like crazy uh, if, if he stays healthy. Now he's a champion. He was good for Vegas this year. Uh, 
he wasn't my favorite player if I was a Vegas fan. That would be Mark Stone because when Mark Stone came back, everything changed. Yeah. But Mark Stone's is 31, banged up. He's not going to make the Hall of Fame. But he's somebody who, man, if he was, if you, if he's the captain of your team, you've got you're in the top tier. Yeah. Of somebody you want as a captain. Uh owner George McPhee or six years? Holy crap. Well, that's what he, they said. Was it him who said it that we're going to make the playoffs in three and win the Stanley Cup in six? And then they made okay. the playoffs the first year and still won the Stanley Cup in six? I... That's crazy. He did it right. And, you know, you asked me something last time and it was like, are you upset based on the teams left over? And after experiencing a game in Vegas and after looking at the crowd, no. Mm -hmm. I you can't get upset when you see a loving crowd like that. Yeah. I can't. It, it, it doesn't doesn't matter where the team is as long as it's supported is what we've learned i mean i nashville was a fantastic crowd absolutely fantastic yeah crowd you experienced crowd. that yourself I was, I was there for a preseason game and it was a fantastic crowd yeah so i mean i just had a blast going to my first cfl game in years that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun so the, these are people but mcphee i think is like the second guy behind eichel in terms of help mm -hmm. as it sort of like goes up uh but the person who actually i want to talk about a lot more for me personally, and you really saw it when he couldn't play that last game. That's Matthew Kachuk, who actually, if I had a Conn Smythe vote, is who I would give it to. I know it's a losing game. I hate game. that man. Hmm? I hate yeah, that man. I know you hate that man, but. He's, uh, and again, I, I hate that man as a guy who roots for Brad Marchand. I get it, right? Brad Marchand has calmed down a lot. Kachuk is essentially becoming where Marchand used to be, and maybe he'll calm down eventually. But that's that's where I see him right now. If he was on my team, I'd love him. I loved yeah. having Todd. I loved having the hot Todd Bertuzzi. Uh, what can they Bertuzzi's first name? I loved oh, having my yeah. Wings on the Red Wings. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's yeah it's, Tyler. Yeah. But Tyler, Tyler, yeah, the the trade for Kachuk has been great. Uh, he's had a phenomenal year. I think he's going to go to the Hockey Hall of Fame. I I truly believe that. And I think what he what he did this series. I don't know if they get out of the first round if Kachuk's not there. They don't. No. Or they may not even make the playoffs, because remember, they squeaked in as an eight. I know. I really wish the Bruins had played the Penguins that first round instead. We would have dominated them. <laughs> didn't want to play Pittsburgh, though? Oh, 100%. Yeah. That team had no chance against the Bruins. Yeah. That Pittsburgh team, they they were done. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, Kachuk. How, how do you think about Bruce Cassidy and this whole thing? I haven't really thought about it. Just wondering. Just wondering if it, what they did for the coach. I mean, we fired him because he couldn't bring us to the promised land, and then he immediately brings the next meeting to the promised land. Well, then, land. yeah, I mean, I, definitely. I mean, he, he, made, he made the playoffs every single year as with the Bruins. Yeah. Uh, he made the Stanley Cup Finals. They blew it against the, the Blues, mm -hmm. right? Um, so... No, I, I, yeah, that's that's definitely an, an elevator up. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's a pretty good list for hockey. Also, who you know who else became a three time Stanley Cup champion other than uh, Phil Kessel? Jonathan Quick. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Forget, you forget he's even on that team. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. got traded there at the trade deadline, and yeah. then King's dumping everybody. Now he's a three time. Uh, at, He's a three-time champ now. I don't think he even played in the playoffs. I don't think so either. Yeah. I didn't I didn't watch every single other game, so I'd be surprised if he did. Well, I know Aiden Hill pretty much took over, and uh, somebody else got hurt, and then they brought in a former Jet, this scrub named Lauren Boissois. Actually saved some here, really. Anyway. Uh, all right, so on basketball, I've got like four names. Yep. Uh, on the losing, two on each side, actually. Uh, okay. We've gone in depth on Jimmy Butler. I, 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 I am gonna shit on NBA Twitter though. Like, so much for uh, playoff Jimmy. Are you fucking kidding me? Got an eight seed to Game Five yeah. of the final lately. Mm -hmm. Just shut up. Exactly. Just shut like, up. He like beat, that, he beat the number one. He beat the top two teams mm -hmm. in the record in the NBA in that playoffs, mm -hmm. and the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. And it wasn't like he had that much help. Adebayo was not – he was worse than he was in, in the regular season. Who like So if, if your number two is slipping, like I don't even know who you consider his number three. 
Well, I mean, Tyler Hero was injured. So you don't have that. Uh, Kyle Lowry is a shell. Kevin Tyler, Love Kyle Lowry. Done. Uh, Duncan yeah. Robinson, like, he, he could show up once in a while. I mean, like, they were lucky. Like, that's all Jimmy Butler. And, like, for anyone to, like, for anyone to sort of, like, rip on that, I get ripping on things. Like, if the Leafs ever win, I'm, or, no, actually, I don't know. If I take that back, I would. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, I mean, Caleb Martin absolutely took over in the end of the uh, Celtics. Yeah, that was the name I was trying to remember. But, um, but yeah, but we're not talking about anybody and, who's at the and, level. And, and Udonis Haslam is on the team. <laughs> yeah, he's technically on the team, even though they, even though his final game where they let him actually play in the regular season. Yeah. So Jesus. Uh, also, too, I think at this point, if Eric Spolstra never coaches again, he's a Hall of Famer. Eric Eric Spolstra. Now, I'm going to be careful when I say this because Pop and Steve Kerr are in the league. I think Eric Spolstra is no worse than the third best coach in the NBA. I personally, if I had a choice right now, would take Spolstra as my coach. I look at this, though. He's taken a team full of high-talented egos to, ch- to championships. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's now taken a team with pretty much – also, playoff Jimmy Gott was hurt, too, the last little games, guys, so don't forget right. that. Right, but, right. but he coached that team with that talent pool to a finals. Yeah, I – I will say this, and, and again, I don't want to bring everything back to my own teams here, uh, but he was a neophyte coach when he basically had the big three there, mm-hmm. uh, plus you, and you don't have them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the same thing with Missoula. Missoula is a new coach here. Like, it took him time to get into – it's supposed to be time to get into who he is now. It's the same reason everyone's like, you got to fire Missoula after whatever. I'm like, he got better as the playoffs went on. Give him some real coaching help on the bench because they had a terrible uh, backup situation for him because they weren't expecting him to be the coach. Uh, get him some real help on the bench and give him some more opportunity. I'm, I'm actually in on that because there's a possibility. Spolsters and Evans said, what happens if you have somebody who you allow to make mistakes? And it's easier for him to make mistakes when you have LeBron James in the team, let's be honest, right? And that, that covers up a lot of sins. Right. But- but I'm it, I'm hope I'm hopeful. Spolster is a thing that makes me hopeful that uh that um young a young coach who you think has it can develop into a, a really good coach someday. So yeah, and anyway. you think like uh well he's really he's thrown into the perfect situation. Look, look at this. He he's got LeBron, Bosch, and uh wait, but they they pretty much wanted because that's when LeBron had, had, could already call shots for everything, right? So he's more right. or less saying, I want a coach that I can bully. Mm-hmm. Even not, maybe not necessarily bully, but yeah, I'm, right. I'm pretty right. much coaching this team. Right. And you ever watch Spolster sort of like grow up through that? That was a lot of trial by fire. That was a lot of having to sort of like massage the biggest egos and get them to put everything together. Just because they were able to win, win something in the, U, in the U.S. tournament, that's like, okay, well, we're all good. We, we can sort of like put this all together. Okay, the it's international one tournament. It's a totally different thing mm. in the NBA. And Spolstra managed everything through that. I can't imagine dealing with... I mean, if I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm an owner, I'm thrilled to have LeBron. If I'm the coach... I'm also thrilled to have LeBron, but I'm also scared. What the fuck's going to happen today? Is anyone going to listen to me today? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a Probably completely too. different dynamic. Spolster has gone through it. He is. I'll put him. I'll put him over Steve Kerr. Only because he's dealt with different things than Kerr has. Yeah. And I, I mean, I still think Popovich is the best coach. Yeah. Um, that, I, I put Pop. We'll, 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 we'll see what happens. I don't know how much longer Pop has. But now if he's getting Wembayamo, now we'll really see how long much longer Pop has. Mm. So Wembayamo and, and Chris Paul go in there. I'm calling it now. So I, I saw this stupid thing on on, uh, on ESPN. It's uh, on first take. So who's going to win more titles, LeBron or or I can't even pronounce his name, the French guy? If you're Wembayana, yeah. Like really? Yeah. But okay. We're, so. we're, 
we're doing that. Right. How about how about the winner side on the NBA? Two. Uh, well, three. Well, well, two people for sure. Uh, Michael Malone, who uh, the head coach, who as Jack Silver, Hall, of, Hall of Fame celebrator. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm actually uh, the same age as him, but mm. yeah, he looks a lot older. But then when he when he sort of like rocking his rap battle hat, as Kendrick Perkins said, uh, maybe I don't. Uh, yeah, uh, and or as Jack Silverstein said, the second best Malone ever in basketball. Yes. Yeah. And my the yeah, guy, Jeff, of course, Jeff Malone. Yeah, he had Jeff at three. Yeah, and yeah. a Canadian who I said before that. If, wait, you, no, wait a second. No, time out, time out, time out, time out. But, He's got to be the third best Malone. Is, is he, is, who is he, who's he leaving out, Moses or Carl? Oh, shit. Okay. Hey, Jack, if you're listening. Yeah, Moses. I'm, right. I put Moses yeah, ahead. Man. That was my first thought. Mm-hmm. Carl Malone. I'm actually okay with him being ahead of Carl Malone. <laughs> I wonder if Post Malone can drain a three. I, he wouldn't I don't remember know. it. Uh anyway. Uh, I was gonna say I was gonna say he could drain a drain a fifth. <laughs> Damn it, I'm not gonna be able to beat that today. All right, all right, you win you win this battle. You win this time, Nolan. Uh I said before that what, everything that Jokic did mm-hmm. to me was even more impressive because Jamal Murray didn't seem strike me as sort of like this premier number two. Mm-hmm. He is more and more. Mm-hmm. Jamal's very young. There's a lot more that he can grow into. And this was, and this was a great step. And I also found interesting. So Jokic is now a champion. Everyone was dogpiling on, on Perkins too. It's like, how, how upset must he be that, that, that they gave the NBA finals to the white guy, but. I mean, but, the white guy did a, had a 30, 20 and 10. So course, in yeah. the NBA finals. So, <laughs> But I mean, Jokic wins. He doesn't even look excited. But like you were saying last, I mean, he's more excited about. He's probably more excited that uh, DeAndre Jordan is going to go out. Of I, was gonna, I was going to say, of all those guys they brought into the Nets when they're making that super team, who would have mm-hmm. thought DeAndre Jordan would be the first one with the championship? <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre Jordan, yeah. I mean, like he basically Phil Kessel it out there on the, on this playoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Uh, he's now a. Uh, He's now a champion. Uh, Jeff Green's a champion. Uh, I was say um, that, that that was the exciting one. Uncle Jeffy, thirteen yeah. teams, the NBA. Mm-hmm. He was. Here's how long he's been around. Do you do you know you know our team drafted Jeff Green? I, don't know, I have no idea. Atlanta, the Boston, the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. He was traded as part of the trade to get Ray Allen to Boston. Holy shit. <laughs> that was a main part and we're like why did we just trade for ray allen and then carnett came afterwards mm-hmm. yeah that was the main part of the trade with jeff green was the main piece going back to the that's how long he's been along he was traded for ray allen who's in the hall of fame to the seattle supersonics who no longer exist <laughs> <laughs> wait how many su- oh no kevin durant was a sonic okay durant was a sonic that's a good question. How many Sonics will be? I'm going to look that up when we're talking. Okay. Uh, another name I want to bring up, actually for our Hall of Fame, uh, for the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, uh, E. Stan Kroenke, who over the last uh, 18 months has won a Super Bowl with the Rams and now an NBA title with the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. But uh, just by the way, I, those are the last two Sonics in the league. Well, the, okay. last, the, the previous remaining Sonic? Uh, the third, I guess, the last Sonic was Nick Collison, who retired. I mean, that was, yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, but I was never sure. Nick Collison, every time you saw him, you're like, oh, Nick Collison's still in the league. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's un- I was unclear whether he was still on a team somewhere. So anyway, continue. Yeah. So, no, that's uh, that's the last thing just saw, because we also have a section where we look at contributors. And uh, I did not, because I, I pretty much quarterbacked that one. I didn't put fourth Kroenke. And when we first put that together, I wouldn't have anyway. Mm-hmm. But now he's a Super Bowl champion. Now he or Super Bowl well, Super Bowl champion. Yeah. He's a Super Bowl. He's won a Super Bowl. He's got he's got one. He can put one hand for football, one hand for basketball. Mm-hmm. And also, but did you see that post interview with Lisa Salters? I did not actually. Okay. Uh I wish Winnie was awake, but Winnie's sleeping right now. 
Uh, not on me, but usually she's sleep. But when he's my dog, for those wondering what the hell, yeah, she'd it's, and, and, and it's, 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 it should be a great prop right now. So, actually, I use my Bud Zero here as the prop. The Bud Zero is Lisa Salters. Okay. All right. What does this mean for you, Stan? And, he's, and this good is the mic. Well, Lisa, it means a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you, I know you're old, but you still, you're still conscious. You know what a microphone were, how that works. Have you not been interviewed before, or do you? Who knows? Or does Lisa really smell good? She, she might. She might. I've never knows? smelled Lisa Salters. Take, take, I'm gonna take, leave that ad alone. Just to keep moving. <laughs> no, no, this is not. This is where I say I'm done with the elevator. And please rescue me because I'm gonna say something. I'll, 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 uh, so we, I, I can segue from your elevator to my uh, bad, ugly, and I guess I'll go with good. <laughs> you have a coach. I, is that uh, it? Yeah. No. So uh, no. this is the this is the week that Bud Selig finally became a Hall of Famer, because my bad this week oh. is Rob Manfred, <laughs> man who hates his sport more than anyone in the history of anyone who ran a sport. Like, as Deadspin put it. Uh, so Deadspin had a whole thing today about, uh, or I guess it was a couple days ago, by uh, Seth Beckwith. I love this because it's a, it's a perfect analogy. Said that um, he must have thought that, uh, hold on, I want to make sure I have it. Oh, I've lost it. Uh, essentially that he saw um, Major League and was – uh, talking about how he thought there was a documentary on how unfair the the owner had been treated. <laughs> I can't I can't find the direct quote, but that essentially what it came down to. So we talked. I talked. I don't know five six weeks ago, maybe a month two months ago, uh, about the um, situation in Oakland. Oakland has had an NHL team which has left. They've had an N and uh and the a team which has moved across the bay and they're they not moving in, back and not moving back they have an nfl team that left for los angeles came back and has now moved to vegas mm -hmm. and now they have a baseball team which to be fair started in philadelphia then moved to kansas city and now moved to oakland in the 70s they've been there for 50 years though and mm -hmm. they have an owner who is sucks a shyster like he's He's not a good guy, right? He's just is. And they they have no fan base because every time they get a player who they like, he's gone by the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. So how can you buy a jersey for a guy who's there for three months, right? So they looked like they were moving to Vegas as well. And the Vegas deal has apparently fallen through. And Ron Manfred, um, who I, I will quote him directly from, this is from Son Beckwith. You are going to say, I don't want to speak for an entire fan base here, but I'm 99.99999% confident when I say Rob Manfred could take his sympathy for Oakland A's fans and shove it up his eh, <laughs> until his eh, are popping out of his eh, go eh, yourself, you eh, lying heap up. Eh. I've already set the bar the, on on this episode for cursing, so I mean, I don't think... But I he have... actually has redacted in the thing. He didn't want to get... Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so if you're following, just play ad libs with four letter words because he gave some truly patronizing quotes about the A's, like the relocation of Vegas. So Ron Manfred got up in front of a whole bunch of cameras and lied his fucking ass off. He did not say a single thing that was true. Nothing yeah. did he say was true. Right? So the A's fans had a sit in where 27,000 people showed up with bags over their heads essentially. I did love to that. To go to a game and make a statement about the fact that this situation sucks, right? Manfred took this opportunity to talk about and after the Vegas thing has fallen through, to talk about how 
Oakland has never even presented a solution to them, which I, who am not following this really that deeply at all, know immediately is bullshit. You know how? Because they've put the presentations out in the newspapers and on the internet. I have read them. <laughs> I have read like, hey, here's the proposal, at least the term, I don't know the actual proposal, but the terms of the proposal. And I'm barely following baseball this year. I know what's going on with the A's. The fact the commissioner doesn't and says that they don't have anything is bullshit. And the owner wants a situation in which they build the stadium and they build like uh, condos and everything else around the stadium, which requires a lot of zoning and other things that Oakland has been unwilling to do, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no guarantee that stuff is going to happen. Manfred brought up Truist Field, where the Braves are playing, right? Saying, look what happened to the area around Truist Field. All the people at Atlanta were like, he built it in a place that already had a bunch of stuff around it. The stuff is still there. And other people said, yes. And now it's like a Turner Field where they built it. Nothing happened. His stadium's gone. And guess what? There's still nothing there. He insulted all the academics who like baseball stadiums or like stadiums don't actually bring stuff to the areas, right? To Some be fair, to be fair, the arena brought uh, where the Jets play brought you close to Mount Manitoba was built around it. Well, there you go. That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. But there are there are situations in where like Gillette, let's take Gillette, right? Mm -hmm. Which is in the middle of freaking nowhere, which is very hard to do in New England. It's very hard to be in the middle of freaking nowhere. Why did they build it there the anyway? What? Why did they build it there anyway? Because it was the only place they could keep the team without moving it. They were playing in Fenway and they had cheap land. They built, I think they built old Sullivan slash Schaefer slash Foxborough Stadium for like a ridiculous sum of like seven million bucks. Oh, so, like, so they did what the Senators did. Yeah. They what just they, they needed right? they were playing so at Nickerson nothing. Field. Yeah. Uh, and they were playing at Fenway. And then they got it, they saved the team by leaving moving it out to there. When I tell you that the Patriots were the redheaded stepchild of New England for a very long time, up until, honestly, I mean, the mid-80s. I'm not lying about that. No, I know you're not. Uh, it was, ah, I mean, even the Celtics were the red-headed stepchild for a while, and they were winning championships, but that was just old racist Boston. As, um, so, uh, but that there, a whole bunch of stuff has grown up around the stadium, but you know why it grew up around the stadium? Because Bob Kraft owns all the land around the stadium and developed it himself. Mm -hmm. As somebody tweeted, if stadiums were such a good deal, owners would build them themselves. Very well put. Right? They wouldn't require other people to build it for them. Now, there's some people, like I said, the Crafts have done it. Uh, uh, I think the guys with the Giants did it uh, out in, in San Francisco. There are a few of them that have done it, and they've worked out. But the vast majority of them don't bring anything. And for him to get up there and lie and say... There was no proposal. It's bullshit. And then be like, well, it's nice to see them get to league average for a day. As someone else pointed out, since the 2001, when Pittsburgh built that new park, mm -hmm. they had 2 million fans in that stadium for a season twice. Then that same mm -hmm. period with the shithole in Oakland, Oakland's had 2 million fans in a season six times. Oh, wow. So it's not the, it's not the stadium. It's the quality of the team, the quality of ownership. If, Owning the team sucks that bad, Mr. Fisher. Sell the fucking team. Mm -hmm. Just sell the team. Yeah. Because if what they wanted in Vegas, they had nine acres in Vegas, right? They had 16 plus in Oakland. If they want, as they said, if they just wanted nine acres to build a stadium on without all the other crap they're adding on, they could have had that in Oakland and be done already. Right. Mm -hmm. But they instead want 16 with like all this crap built around, right? Sell the team and Rob Manfred. <laughs> eat up a poker and sit on it. <laughs> not not just the poker, but you gotta make it flaming hot. Too. Flaming hot. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to really stay on it long term. But and I'm not saying internally, external is fine. But I want you to feel something. Because <laughs> He makes Bud Selig look like, I don't know, like pick your favorite, your Benjamin Disraeli. Like you pick your favorite, like politician, political person of all time. Rob Manfred, 
sucks. He sucks. Gary Bettman is somehow getting better. Adam Silver is somehow getting worse, but still nowhere near them. Uh, I, I am I am not sure that Roger Goodell's battery pack has changed recently enough for me <laughs> to know what's going on with him. But Rob Manfred is the worst commissioner this side of the NCAA. He is awful. He needs to go. He's like all those changes they made this year, fantastic for baseball, right? Mm -hmm. But he just sucks. And I'm also available for that job too. Yeah, you're more likely to get that one. I'm so, no, I'm really not. <laughs> more likely, and so, I mean, we've gone from, from you know. Well, that's 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 true. I mean, yeah, but both are basically that uh, Jim Carrey chance with Lauren Holly and um, yes, and Dumber. So you're saying there's a chance. They're saying there's a chance. Although the two actors, I want to date you if they're your last guy on earth. They're yeah. saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, that's, that's and that's just the bad. All right. Uh, I'm going to combine the good and the ugly into one thing. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So I'm going to start with the good. I don't know. I'm glad we didn't actually do this on Thursday night. We're doing the Saturday midday. Um, yeah, it worked, worked out well for my rant, too. It did. And it worked out well for my good and ugly as well. Mm -hmm. The U.S. and Mexico played a soccer game. Mm -hmm. I saw the highlights. A sort of soccer game. Um, that Yes, it was um, it was somewhere between a soccer game, Australian rules, Australian rules football, and a street fight. Um, the reason, the good I want to say here is I've been very critical of the U.S. team, and I'm about to be again in a second, which I know is terrible. But that is the best version of them I have seen in years. They were attacking. They were communicating they were thinking ahead they've had all the changes to coaches just that alone is enough for me to want to see that temporary coach stick around because that is the most aggressive and we're better than you so we're going to beat you i have seen the u.s in 10 years honestly mm -hmm. right so that's the good it's the best i've seen them it was great to see balagoon out there the kid who just uh, had the choice of joining either England or Nigeria, the U.S. He joined the U.S. Great mm -hmm. to see him. Uh, it was great to see, uh, as someone said, Claudio uh, uh, Gio Reyna was came off the field and was very excited. And they were announced who the new coach was going to be. And they're like, Gio Reyna looks pretty excited for a guy who just played his last team for the U.S. last game for the U.S. team since uh, Greg Berhalter is coming back, um, which we'll get to in a second. But that was fantastic football and if they play like that they're going to be great the other side uh before i get to the real ugly the fact that greg burhalter is going to be our coach again i'm going to start here he did not deserve to lose his job for the geo reina claudio reina what happened with him in college that he's atoned for gone to uh, gone to counseling for everything we are both firm believers that people can fuck up and if they work hard can redeem themselves mm -hmm. yep, we're both firm believers in that, right yeah and by all accounts greg berhalter had a bad day when after his then girlfriend who's now his wife realized he was a fucking asshole went to went with her to therapy to get himself through that and nothing like that has ever happened again Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe the people in him and around him that that was is something in the past, an aberration that he worked on to try and better himself. Okay, I'm not in any way condoning the the action, but you cannot hold someone by one action when they make absolute effort to try and make sure it never happened again. Okay, so I'm going to start there. That said, his mishandling of G their Gio Reyna situation is what got him there in the first place. He brought a player and then said, hey, you're never going to play. Why bring the player? Mm -hmm. There are other people we could have brought. Like Ricardo Pepe scored the third goal in that game. Ricardo Pepe, the only reason the U.S. qualified for World Cup was Ricardo Pepe scored five goals for us in qualifying and then didn't make the team. And then we scored three total goals in four games in the World Cup. Right. 
So he mismanages the roster. He mismanaged some of the players. And in the words of uh, Louis Van Gaal, the coach of the Netherlands when we were eliminated, Netherlands just much better in that game in the U.S. And he said they had no idea how to deal with our tactics. Their tactics were uh, primitive, I believe was the exact word he said. Right? He did what he needed to do. He got us back on track. This team needs somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. And it's possible the six months off that he's had is going to bring him back into that. I don't think they had this sham of a of a search far and wide across the world for who they wanted and then ended up with the same guy. I just don't know. I don't have anything against Greg Berhalter, but it it makes me think of the the um the Godfather, where Tom Hagen is the, the peacetime conciliary, and then they need a war Michael's a wartime conciliary. We yeah. need we need the wartime conciliary right now. No, the, the, not, the references we we've been doing here, I hope we, we've we got a fan base that are between 60 and 200. Because Jesus. I feel like, well, Jesus is not in our in our group, I don't think. But I think most people most people know the Godfather, I would yeah. hope. Um, so I would say, though, like, we just need someone who can bring this team to where it needs to be. And I don't think Greg Berhalter is that person. I'm not furious at the at the hiring i'm just nonplussed is the word like mm -hmm. we've been here we've seen what we could do maybe develop something over the last six months i have a hard time believing it he would have in the same game if he were the same guy we would have scored that first goal and he would have just sat back the rest of the game and let mexico take it to us mm -hmm. that's the way he does stuff instead uh bj i think it was last name right now uh the coach we had uh had just had us attack 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 play smart, and we dominated that, absolutely dominated Mexico. Which brings me to the ugly, the full ugly. I had to, I had to do the little transition there. Mm -hmm. FMF, Federación de Fútbol Mexicano, or Mexican, the, so the Soccer Federation Mexico. Mm -hmm. As much as I think that we are a disaster for the U.S. and a backwater, maybe it's just because CONCACAF is a backwater, I mean, we did have a referee during that game who gave a yellow card to Christian Pulisic, who was the captain of the team, for handing off his captain's armband to somebody else. He got yellow carded for wasting time. He's walking up the field. Some guy up, hey, you need to give me your armband. It's like, oh, yeah. Turn around, hand his armband, turn back, and got yellow carded for wasting time. That's all you really need about CONCACAF referees. <laughs> but the Mexico team is a disaster. Disaster. Memo Ochoa, the goalkeeper, is like he's kind of like Derek Jeter for me. Back in the day, where Jeter, I he hated the Yankees. Gifts but baskets I, to women that he sleeps with. That I don't know, but oh. he seems like a classy guy. He might. Um, okay. But he's like with those Yankees teams. I hated so much. There's so many guys I hated. Like I sort of hated Jeter, but he was just so freaking good and always a class act. Memo Ochoa is the exact same way. Memo, by the way, he got yellow carded for breaking up a fight. So this, this referee was just on top of things. Um, but outside of him, that team is just a whiny group of hooligans. Like, I don't have a better word for it. And they're, they are no attacking form. They, their coach has no idea what to do. And their fans, I swear their fans are trying to get the, 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 team suspended yeah. in an effort to try and get change because that the whole the whole um anti-gay chant that they did that they stopped the game for and then called the game somehow that guy gave like in the game where there was basically a fight breaking out of a few minutes it was like you know what we need again the referee you know what we need 12 additional minutes um so and then they they stopped it after seven questions. But like, you think that they're doing they're they're doing this to try? Um, that's best case scenario. I think oh. they're just they're just completely fed up, and they don't know where to vent their anger. Um, but here's the thing: World Cup's coming in 2026, right? Mm -hmm. There are games being played in Canada. There are mm -hmm. Games being played in the United States. Do you know where the final for the World Cup is being played? Well, I do not. I guess it's Mexico City. 
Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. Uh oh. <laughs> My sentiments exactly. Oh, no. They got to figure this out before 2026 because you cannot have a World Cup final in a stadium where what was going on in that game in California was going on in Mexico City with 100, what is it, 117,000 people in the Stadio Azteca, I believe. I, I like, only saw highlights of that game. Uh, where in California was that? LA? Uh, Stockton, I think. All right. Is it like it usually is when the U.S. plays uh, Mexico and California? It's 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. 50. Yeah. I, I've seen it where it's usually. No, I'd, I'd say it's pretty 50 50 for that. Okay. There's a whole Mexican section. I'd say it's pretty 50 50. Okay. As, no, opposed sure. to, as opposed to the Canada Panama game, which preceded it, which was half full, half full. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's, but, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just by the way, I wanted to point out. Yeah. There, Canada, we talked about where Eric Spolster is in coaching hier hierarchy. Canada mm -hmm. is now 100% no worse than number two in CONCACAF. There you you guys, are, you're ahead of Panama, you're ahead of Costa Rica, and I now put you ahead of Mexico. Oh, Canada. There we go. Oh, and who would, who would have thought that two Not World Cup cycles ago? Not me. You guys have come a long freaking way. And I also, the, I, I also would champion, not thought that next year will be a 30-year anniversary drought of no Stanley Cup for a Canadian team, but that's, that's likely where we're headed. Well, there you go. The, well, the U.S. U.S. and Canada play the championship of the CONCACAF Nations League coming up here. Mm. Uh, I think on Monday, Tuesday? Monday? Okay. Well, I think it's Monday. We'll that, that, game is, that game is going to be real good, even though two of the U.S. players got red carded. Sergio Des, 100%. So Junior Des deserved it. Guy punched him in the back of the head. He punched the guy in the face. Red card. I got it. Mm -hmm. Wes, Wes and McKinney, they, they foul Balagoon, instant red card. He was fighting off six people, and in the front, and in fighting off six people, put his hand like here on a guy mm -hmm. and pushed him away. Didn't choke him, just like put his hand there to push the guy away and got red carded for that while he was being accosted by six people with his shirt being ripped. So don't 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 get me started. That 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 referee. I'm not going to argue about Des. Des was stupid, but McKinney had no reason getting thrown out of that game. So anyway, oh one last thing. I am going to be going to the opening of the Gold Cup. The first oh. game of the Gold Cup is happening here in Chicago. For some reason, the only game we're getting is U.S.-Jamaica. Uh, so we have the Gold Cup starts a week from today. Uh, U.S.-Jamaica here in uh, Soldier Field. So I'm going to be taking my son to his first uh, soccer match. Unfortunately, all the guys who are playing in this uh, CONCACAF Nations final are not playing. In uh, in they we have like an entirely different coach or entirely different uh Roster. team and mm -hmm. and the same coach though. Berhalter's not taking over for the new tournament. Oh, uh, okay. He's having the, the temporary guy. Okay, interesting. I don't understand anything <laughs> in the last six months. <laughs> Somehow the team got better and the coaching has gotten confusing. That's why you play the game, kids. All righty. Well, let's uh, wrap this up with plugs. Ooh. There's a bunch of stuff that I've got to still put up uh, on the site. I've been a little bit lackadaisical on that, just uh, spreading all the things around for the site. But uh, the, uh, the the football, the retro football show with Super Bowl six will be up soon, and we are going to do Super Bowl seven. So that should be very interesting. Don't tell me who won. Which uh, is a Gary your premium Super Bowl? Is that seven? He well, he was in he was in six. He's also going to be in seven. No, with the one where he threw the football and got intercepted. Uh, that must be seven. I haven't watched it yet. That's seven. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His teammates are furious with him. <laughs> uh, I, I I I I like that era when uh, when it was all these these interesting named uh, European kickers. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, we are your premium in Gary yeah. Erickson. No, Ali Haji Sheik. <laughs> Look that up, kids. That that really was a Giants kicker for a many, many moons. Uh, also, the Classic Sports Review, where we look at the last WHA game, is going to be on. And our next one's going to be the debut of Roller Games. So mm. that should be up uh, 
In a little bit, uh, the we, the show that I do with uh, the lovely and talented Andrea Testman and uh, well, and Brad Nelson. I don't know if I want to call him lovely and talented, but he's interesting and I like him. So we'll run with that. He doesn't and, want and, this. So, and so. available and present. <laughs> he's definitely available for <laughs> things that I wish I didn't know, but that's another story in itself. Uh, we do a show where we look at weird hits and ask, how the hell did this, was this a hit? Uh, the next one that we're doing is, wait, what the hell is it? I didn't pick it. Oh, that's right. Eric in my eye, Cheech and Sean. We were supposed to do that last week, but we didn't. And okay. we'll be doing it this week. I will be attending a funeral in Ontario. But, uh, oh, that, that piqued your interest. You want to want to be on that? The Cheech and Sean one, I have nothing to say on that oh, one. I have nothing? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. that's, they, they actually went number nine with that song, oh. which is very interesting. So we'll be looking at that. Uh Next week, we'll be doing another episode of Vinny Makes the Hall of Fame Case 4. Uh, I don't know who he's doing yet, but the last one we did was Pudge, Pudge Heffelfinger, the first man to ever make money playing pro football. So that's a okay. pretty, yeah, so that's a that's a pretty interesting one. I keep thinking I'm forgetting something. I probably am, but. Uh, In the USA, Hall of Fame. Yeah, we'll the United around. States Athletic Hall of Fame, www.nothalloffame.com. Uh, dot com forward slash usa oh i know what i'm forgetting uh next week or week after uh we're going to be sending out ballots for the mock pro football hall of fame oh fantastic yeah so like i've got about uh, nearly 20 people so far i'm hoping to get a few more before we start doing that uh yeah. if you want to be a part I, it, of that, it's one of those things that's going to grow as we grow do you understand i think, I, I think so I if if i remember from the the music <laughs> one started like 20 people and by the time they're done they're like 150 or so yeah, I mean, I, I had one person, uh, our friend Ron Katz out in Denver, the former Broncos fan in the year, says, I want to be a part of it, but I want to feel more comfortable with some of these players that I've seen. Fair enough. Fair enough. That yeah. that's, There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, I there's no way for me to see some of these, so I'm just going to have to trust what I've read and some of the research involved. And if you want to be a part of that, we would love to yeah. have you. It, it, you'll, it, you'll have to vote with your heffel fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Evan two, Kirk zero, uh, <laughs> zero. There you go. Uh, perfect theme for the day. Uh, I might as well have been drinking for this a real beer for the amount of d shitty dad jokes I made this whole time. Well, uh, it is Father's Day weekend, so yeah. And with it's that, funny uh, cause it's got funny because uh, ninety three seven here does like a year in review on Saturday mornings, and this today it was nineteen seventy two, mm -hmm. and the. I drove my son to volleyball and I drove him back. We heard like four songs and three of the four songs are all basically like my dad sucked. And my, and my son's like, like last was Papa was a Rolling Stone. When that came on, my son was like, dad, this is Father's Day weekend. Why are they playing these songs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some, like some of the ones that are, yeah. okay, but look at some of the great ones about good dads and they're really creepy, like watching Scotty grow. All right. And I never liked Landslide either. Yeah, and landslides is one of the songs that comes on like. Eh. Well, well so, anyway. one thing one thing go with a real sort of like banger to to end with about you know about a dad and his kid tears in heaven. That's gonna lift the crowd. Oh, there you go. Yeah, man. Well, that really ended on a clunk. So <laughs> why why should this one be any different? With that, from Mount Manitoba and suburban Chicago, mm -hmm. wherever you are, wherever you may be, stay safe, everybody. Take care, guys.